At the gallop! Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Maybe I'm wearing thin on this stable detailed beam. This is three days running we drew this duty. Anytime you want to tell me something I don't know, I'm willing to listen, Harrison. Tomorrow morning, come fatigue call, I got a mind to bust out of line and volunteer for something more elevating. I don't see how there's a job on this post more elevating than readying up the stable. You ain't ever got a complaint, have you? There's a long list of things I ain't never got, Harrison. A man ought to want change in his life. He ought to seek it out. Try for it. Change. That's what keeps a man's interest alive. When you bust out a line tomorrow morning, why don't you volunteer for post chaplain? Now, you think you got off a good one there, don't you, Beam? You're just right pleased with your fine touch of humor. I thought you knew I was comical. Oh, I'm standing here near busting laughing. That's how comical you are. I'll make this arrangement with you, Harrison. I won't talk to you if you won't talk to me. I'd admire to do that. I just admire to. Bean? Come on, Beam, you hear me all right. That's one of the shortest arrangements I ever had. Yeah, well, let's rest a spell. I'm agreeable. Rest a spell and have a chalk. You're getting more likable, Harrison. No sense in us going at each other, working as close as we do, living as close. I want to make friends with you, Beam. Starting when? This minute. You ain't one for ceremony now, are you? Couple of good friends where we are. It's only right we should rest a spell and have a chaw. I'm willing. You, uh, got a chaw, ain't you? You talking about tobacco? Of course I am. I can't call the time I had a plug tobacco. You lying to me, Bean. No, we being such good friends the way we are... Why should I lie to you? You chawing, ain't you? Been chawing all morning. Well, sure, I'm chawing. You ain't chawing tobacco. What are you rolling around on your tongue? Shifting one side of your mouth to the other. Knickknick. You say that again? Knickknick. You being comical again, Bean? Uh, you're just a boy. I keep forgetting. You don't recollect the war much. I recollect the war better than I recollect that king... Whatchamacallit? It's bark. Injuns taught us Yanks about it. Red willow bark, I think it is. Anyways, they'd cut it deep from the trees, cut it into shreds. Uh, they used it most for smoking. You cut into any red willow trees up here on the high plains, Beam? Well, not me. But last time we was down on the agency, I got me some off a squaw. I swear you're lying to me. Why, here, here, in my pocket. Help yourself. You hankering for a chaw? It makes one. Well, it's dry sand. Well, you got to work it some. Oh, you... Yeah. Yeah. 
C'est fin, ça. Mm. You, you sure stuff's off a willow tree? Red willow. <coughs> Or, how come they look so pleasing and taste so bad? Well, I didn't say it was good. You wanted a chaw, I obliged you. Yes. <coughs> Yeah, I said you was just a boy. Well, sometimes I'm hungry. I don't eat a polecat because that's all I got handy. You got a taste for tobacco. Why don't you buy yourself some? The settler keeps a fine line. A bull Durham, Sealand, North Carolina. You know why I don't buy. I got no money. Same as you. Same as every trooper on this post. That paymaster ain't been through here in four months. And before that, it was six. No money. Pliny, he won't give me no more credit. You ain't all alone, you know, Harrison. Ain't nobody been paid in four months' time. I'm gonna do something, Bean. I don't rightly know what it is now, but that Pliny, he's gonna give me some more credit somehow. Major Daggett, sir? Oh, Captain Quince is about to send for you. Yes, sir. Ah, I thought this morning's drill went very well. Seemed to. But there's one thing that's becoming a problem. Selecting my orderly for the day. I want you to give some thought to it. In what way? Well, as I say, the drill seems sharp enough. Soldiering generally is good. The men are keeping the post in good order. The men themselves are the problem about this orderly business. Let's see now. The book says the neatest and smartest trooper will be chosen as orderly of the day for the commanding officer. It's supposed to be an honor, Captain. A recognition for good soldiering. Lately, my orderlies have been smart enough, but the neatness is severely lacking. I'll speak to B Company about it, sir. We still employ laundresses at Fort Laramie, Captain. And the clothing allowances are far better than they used to be. Well, when they come. Now, what do you mean by that? Just that the paymaster hasn't stopped here since mid-spring. Four months. I'm aware of that. Summer soldiering's tough, Major. Campaigns are hard, weather's hot. Neat and clean is a big order. A good soldier will still make the effort. Pass the word, Captain. Yes, sir. Oh, now then. You want to see me about something? Yeah? The paymaster... I wondered if he's heading our way at all. Are you running short of funds, Captain? I'm not asking for myself, sir. Uh, let's see. Last word I had, he was here at Fort Omaha. And with the stops to make between here and there, I can't say with certainty when we should expect him. Hmm, that'd mean stops at Fort Kearney, McPherson, here at the North Platte Station, and Fort Mitchell before he gets here. Uh, unless he cuts off down to Fort Sydney after he leaves North Platte Station. Well, four months is a long time for the men to go without pay, Major. I know it. Unfortunately, the route and schedule of the paymaster is not within my province. Oh, uh, are there hardship cases, Lee? I'm hearing no complaints directly. I don't like it either. But they're fed and clothed. And I'm sure Pliny's doing the best he can in the way of extending credit. <laughs> you are? Well, he'd be a fool not to. Pliny likes money, Major. Got a real respect for it. I don't think he feels just the same toward extending credit. It's not enough. No, that's not nearly enough. Oh, I might want to put it in a safer place, though. Yes, I might want to do that. So I just put it in these sacks here. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. Huh? Mm -hmm. Morning, Pliny. I'll be with you in just a minute. What do you call that stuff? Uh, why, money, Sergeant. 
Yes, money. Oh, mm. now, Pliny, you don't call that mm-hmm. money. You get along with a couple of sacks of that, and you know blame well you call it uh, sweetheart or something mm-hmm. loving like that. Oh, that's not true. No, no, no. I call it money. Now, really, I do. Money. Mm-hmm. Well, what you gonna mm-hmm. do? Bury it? See if it'll grow? Indeed not. That can be very dangerous, you know, burying money. Just fill these sacks here. Say, you're getting some shin plasters in there with a big bill. Uh-uh. Oh, my, I wish they'd quit making them. It's confusing. You think you got a nice roll of bills, and then some of them three-cent notes get in there, and a gee. Besides, it won't, you know. It won't? No, indeed. No, indeed. An exploded theory years ago. (laughs) What is? If you bury money, it will not grow. Well, now, I learned something today. Yeah, yes, many years ago, too. Let's see. Ah, there, that completes... Ah. Now, I'll just put these sacks in my safe and everything. Uh, are you wanting to buy something? What kind of cigars you got? Oh, well, oh, we got some fine Havanas, just the best there is. <laughs> Here, I keep them over in the cabinet by the door, under lock and key. Pliny. Huh? It's me, Sergeant Gorse. Yes, I see you. What is that? <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got long nines, supers, and short sixes. And I got a three-cent shin plaster. Where? Right here. Oh, yes. Oh, so you have a three cents. Well. Mm-hmm. Um, now, these short sixes are nice. They give them away in saloons. Oh, they give them away? Free? Try not to think on it, Pliny. It might make you queasy. Free? Oh, my goodness. No. Sometimes I pay as high as a cent for two of them. Two for a... for a cent? Well, now, I... Um, well, I might let you have one super, but just one, mind you, for uh, three cents. I had my mouth set for a long nine after supper. Oh, now, now, you don't really expect that, Sergeant. A long nine for three cents? Why, I'd stand to lose... Oh, yeah. Let me see now. How much would I You'd from? stand to make two cents easy. But these are from New England, Sergeant. Tell the truth, I'm running short of them. Now, this is the last barrel, and I... You're I'm... practically forcing me into a saloon, Pliny. Uh, uh, you're really desperate for a good smoke, aren't you? Not near as desperate as you are for my last three cents. You, uh... Won't bandy this about the post? I could bandy my head off, and there wouldn't be no run on your store, Pliny. The way that paymaster takes his time, I stand to be one of the few men at Fort Laramie that still got a three-cent note. Yes, well, now, let me see. Long nine? All right, help yourself, Sergeant. To one for three cents. Afternoon, Mr. Sabbats. Oh, good afternoon, Captain Quince. Working on your journal and taking the air at the same time, huh? Too hot in my quarters, a bit more of a breeze out here. Uh, you feel the breeze off these planes. You're an optimist, Mr. Sabbats. It's hot. Hot as sin. Wonder if it's this hot where the paymaster is. Not near as hot as where most of the men wish he was. Oh, I didn't mean that, sir. I did. <laughs> you feeling the pinch, too, Mr. Sabbats? No, no, sir. I'm fine. Thank you, Captain. I, I was just thinking maybe it's the weather delaying the paymaster again. Last time it was snow. It was last month, wasn't it? Well, last month you passed that tobacco around among the men. My uncle sent it, the one in Connecticut. I wrote him, sort of suggested it'd be nice to get some more, but either he hadn't gotten the letter yet or he didn't get the idea. It was a good thing, Mr. Sabitz. Thank you, sir. You, uh... You still serving on the Council of Administration? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I am. Still have charge of the post fund, do you? That's part of the duty. How much money in it? Let me see now. I have the exact figures in the ledger up my quarters. I'll run up and get Oh, them. never mind that. You, you've got an idea how much, haven't you? Well, I'd have to think a moment. Uh, according to the general orders, the sutler pays 10 cents for every officer and enlisted man. That's 10 cents a month, payable every two months. About... $30 a month, then? Uh, roughly that. $360 a year. 
Have we had any cause to disturb it recently, Mr. Seibertz? Well, we bought garden seeds a couple of months ago. That's in accordance with Provision D of the general orders. Mm -hmm. And before that, we took some out to buy newspapers. Uh, that's according to the last part of Provision C. I just wanted an idea of how much, Mr. Seibertz. Um... I, I think close to $500, very close to that. Uh, suppose we let the men draw on it till the paymaster comes. Draw on it? Yeah, borrow it. For what purpose? Mm, tobacco, beer, whatever use they want to put it to. But the general orders are specific as to the uses of the fund, Captain. I'm aware of that, Make but an I... independent decision. That is to say, this order comes from the adjutant general's office. I have a copy of them here. When I was appointed to the Council of Administration, I made the orders part of my personal record. Uh, no need to read me the orders, Mr. Simon. Oh, no trouble, sir. I'll be glad to refresh my own memory. Um, oh, here it is. General Orders Number 22, dated April 7, 1866. <clears throat> well, the first part deals with the sutler requiring that he make this payment for the privilege he enjoys as post oh, I just thought if the men could look on it like it was their own money, not a handout... Well, here's the part I was talking about, sir. The post fund is to be used for, A, the expenses of a bakehouse, B, the establishment of a post school for uneducated soldiers who might desire schooling... Oh, and for the children of the soldiers. I was thinking more like a plug of See, tobacco. See, the or... establishment of a library and the purchase of newspapers. D, for the purchase of garden seeds. Oh, th that's the provision I mentioned uh, previously. Tobacco or a glass of beer. You know, this hot weather, a man ought to enjoy a glass of beer. And then finally, wants. provision E provides... Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir? I'm getting the idea there's no provision for beer and tobacco when the paymaster's late. That's correct, sir. I'm sorry to say that there isn't. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Seibertz. Uh, Captain Quince, I could get a letter off to the adjutant general's office asking for clarification. Oh, no, that's a bad habit to get in right in Washington for clarification. You get into that, you'd have to give up soldiering. <laughs> think maybe I'll go face him alone, Beam. You could linger outside here, in case I needed help or like that. You got a scheme. I want to hear what it is. I had a scheme I wouldn't mind telling you. First thought comes fresh into my mind, I'm going to say it to Pliny. Sometimes the first thing I think is best. You want to take some knick-knick for your trapes in there? Might work up your courage. I want no such thing. You linger here now. Be with you as soon as I close the safe. Take your time, Planny. Uh -huh. yes, uh. <coughs> ah, there we are. Now then, what can I do for you? Uh, oh, oh. It's you, Trooper. I thought it might be a customer. I mean to be. Now, what I had in mind... Uh, Trooper Harrison, we've been through this before. Many times. Oh, any number of times. We have no such thing. Not this Credit. Time. I've been extremely generous about extending credit. Not recent, Jane. Oh, but you're wrong. You're wrong. Last evening, I was looking over my accounts. Now, uh, the paymaster is four months late, as it is. Now, I know that without looking into my uh, accounts. Hear me out, boy. Now, hear me out. Well, I discover that if you give me your full four months' pay, we'd still have some accounting to do, you and I. You think I'd come in here, face the shame of asking your favor, if it wasn't real important? Well, I don't know, would you? A man's got his pride, Planny. Yes, I suppose so. And next to a man with good credit, give me a man with pride. Every time. Every time. It's my ma, Planny. My old gray-haired ma. No. Oh. Guess you know how I feel about my old ma. Well, of course I do, indeed. Of course. Your old ma. Why, sure. Well, now, she's got a big day coming real soon. And it come to me... Say, another big day? What do you mean? Well, last night, you remember the accounts? I noticed she had a birthday just a few weeks ago. She did? Yes. Oh, we got up a nice selection of gifts for her. 
Half a dozen plugs of tobacco. And it seems to me we tucked in some cigars for Mother. Fine Kentucky woman, my old ma. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And the month before that, on her birthday, we bought Mother two jugs of whiskey and a pipe. Well, now, you, you recollect about them jugs. Remember they got broke over in the barracks? That's right. That's right. Got broke. And not a drop of whiskey reached the floor. Oh, yes, I remember that. Oh, yeah, w well... Uh, when is Mother's birthday uh, this month? Oh, now... It's not her birthday this time, Pliny. It's... This time... Well, uh, this time she's... Hmm? She's, uh... Having a baby. A baby? Oh. Mother is having a bit. Oh, my. Fine Kentucky woman, my old ma. Yes, isn't she? Oh, we'll want to do something about that now, won't we? Well, yeah. I thought we'd get up another batch of plug for yeah. some cigars. And this time we'd take special care of them jugs don't get broke. Oh, all the care in the world, yes, for Mother. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. You want to start putting everything together? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'll just get this in. Yes, yes. What you doing? I uh, hear now you write down Mother's address. Write it down for what? For the parcels. My goodness, we're not going to take any chances this time. No, sir. I'll march these to the post office. Mail them to Mother myself. Oh, Pliny. No extra charge, none whatsoever. <laughs> Captain Quint's reporting, Major. Well, sit down, Captain. Well, thank you, sir. Well, I guess this is the news we've been waiting for. The paymaster? He's at North Platte Station awaiting our escort. You want the duty, Captain? It's all right with me. Pick your men. Leave as soon as you can. Yes, sir. If things go as they should, you'd be back here by late Friday, right? Right. Good luck, Captain. You worried about the escort, Major? Of course not. You know what I'm worried about. Yeah. Well, I'll stop in Laramie Village if you like. <laughs> Warn them to get ready for attack. I suppose I could double the guard starting Friday night. But nah, it wouldn't be fair, would it, Captain? Wouldn't do much good either. Maybe just have the officers stand by as usual. That's all we can do. Well, move out, Captain. Yes, sir. Four months payroll for 300 men. Well, you might not have a problem, Major. We always do. I don't see how we can avoid it this time. Well, maybe we'll be lucky. Maybe we'll be hijacked on the way back. came as soon as I could, Captain. I never saw anything like this in my life, sir. What a sight, Mr. Cybert. Are, uh, are all the men accounted for? They won't be for days. Some of them we may lose entirely, Mr. Cybert. You mean desertion? Uh, a few. Some of them just been waiting for money enough to get out of here. I've got a fresh new batch to tend to. Oh, oh! last from the village, Captain. Well, they look kind of limp. Yeah, and I had to help them get that way, sir. Harrison there bought a raft of lead powder in town. He had in mind to blow Piney up, he said. Well, the hospital's full. They're stacked three deep in the guardhouse. Well, just take them to their barracks, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Yeah. Cybert? Yes, Captain? There's still a guard around the powder magazine? Oh, yes, sir. Major Daggett's directing that person. Good. 
the men, they wouldn't bother the powder magazine, would they? They might, Mr. Syberts. Might blow up Fort Laramie, or they might just pool their money and buy it. This army might do anything on payday. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Tom Henley. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Howard McNear, Sam Edwards, and Clayton Post. Jack Moyles is Major Daggett, and Harry Bartell is Lieutenant Seibertz. Company, tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. This is Norman MacDonald. Sixty-seven years ago, as the first hint of autumn stole across the Laramie Plain, the decree was issued to close Fort Laramie as a military post. It was a routine order couched in the clipped, impersonal language of the Army. Fort Laramie had served its purpose. Close it down. Put a period to a chapter of history. Put an end to an era. That's what the decree really said. For the abandonment of the fort on the Laramie marked the closing of the frontier... The story of Fort Laramie is a monument to ordinary men who lived in extraordinary times, of a land that was new and untried, as cruel as it was beautiful. It's the story of small numbers of men with good in them and bad, heroism and cowardice, honor and dishonor, ordinary men, ordinary men whose enemies were the rugged, uncharted country, the heat, the cold, Disease, boredom, and perhaps, last of all, hostile Indians. Men lived at Fort Laramie and men died there. Of drowning, freezing, typhoid, smallpox. Some may even have died from boredom. But it's a matter of record that in all the years the cavalry was stationed at Fort Laramie, only four troopers died of gunshot wounds. And so we mark the 67th anniversary of the closing of Fort Laramie, glad of our chance to reopen it, to tell the story of a proud landmark of the Old West and the ordinary men who served there.